This is a statutory interpretation case, and I'll get to that bit, but first I want to talk about Esme Kwazin. That's her on the left. In June 1979, Esme was working as an air hostess aboard a TAA flight from Sydney to Brisbane via Coolangatta. A sailor in his 20s named Philip Sillery got on the plane in Coolangatta. He had a loaded, sawn-off shotgun. He was distressed because his wife and children had left him. He pointed the gun at Esme and demanded entry to the cockpit. He threatened the pilot, Captain Graham Mackelman, who landed the plane in Brisbane and convinced him to let the passengers go. Sillery demanded to be flown to Darwin and Mackelman agreed to have the plane fueled up. Esme Kwazin saw a moment where the gun was pointed in a safe direction and the hijacker wasn't watching her. She jumped on him and tackled him. The others then joined in, and soon the police swarmed the plane. For taking on the gunman, she was awarded the Star of Courage, one of the highest awards for bravery that a civilian person can earn. The gunman was charged with hijacking, but the hijacking charge was unusual. In most criminal offences, the penalty is listed at the end, and there's a specific provision in the Acts Interpretation Act which says that when a penalty is set out like that, the penalty is the maximum penalty. In this case, though, the penalty for hijacking had its own subsection, which said the punishment for an offence against this section is imprisonment for life. So when the Parliament wrote that section, Did it mean that the penalty was mandatory imprisonment for life, or did it mean that the maximum penalty was imprisonment for life? It really wasn't clear whether the Parliament had broken away from the usual practice of listing the penalty last in order to make the penalty mandatory. The High Court, in a split decision, found that where there is ambiguity in a statute which will affect the liberty of a person, the benefit of the doubt should fall in favour of the person whose liberty will be lost. Justice Murphy said, The general presumption is that legislation affecting the liberty of the person is to be construed favourably to the person. As a result, the court presumed the penalty to be a maximum and not a mandatory penalty. (music) 